Hello and welcome to the new lesson on Azure Role-Based Access Control and Groups. In this lesson, we will discuss what are Azure roles, what are groups, how they are defined in Azure, and how we can efficiently manage access to the resources and enterprise applications using groups and roles. So let's start with the Azure roles first. Azure roles are set of permissions which are defined within the Azure role which determine what level of access a user would have to the resources. Azure role-based access control is basically an authorization system which provides a fine-grained access management to the Azure resources. Microsoft Azure has predefined four fundamental roles which are owner, contributor, reader and user access administrator. Now let's discuss all of them one by one. Owner has basically full access to all the resources and can delegate access to the others. Contributor can manage all the resources except access management, while the reader can only view the Azure resources. And user access administrator manages user access to the Azure resources. So now that we have the necessary information about the roles and role-based access control, let's see where these roles actually reside in Azure. Hello and welcome to the new lesson on Azure role-based access control and groups. In this lesson, we will discuss what are Azure roles, what are groups, how they are defined in Azure, and how we can efficiently manage access to the resources and enterprise applications using groups and roles. So let's start with the Azure roles first. Azure roles are set of permissions which are defined within the Azure role which determine what level of access a user would have to the resources. Azure role-based access control is basically an authorization system which provides a fine-grained access management to the Azure resources. Microsoft Azure has predefined four fundamental roles which are owner, contributor, reader and user access administrator. Now let's discuss all of them one by one. Owner has basically full access to all the resources and can delegate access to the others. Contributor can manage all the resources except access management, while the reader can only view the Azure resources. And user access administrator manages user access to the Azure resources. So now that we have the necessary information about the roles and role-based access control, let's see where these roles actually reside in Azure. So here we are at our Azure portal. Let's navigate to Azure Active Directory. And then in here I can see the option which says Roles and Administrators. So let's click on it. And in here we can see all the predefined roles that have been pre-configured by Microsoft Azure. Okay. So let's find out a simple role and see what it has for us. So let's say I have this, this role which says Directory Readers. Now the description says can read basic directory information commonly used to grant directory read access to the applications and guests. Which means that if I assign this role to some user or to some application, he or the application will be able to read the directory information, our Azure directory information I'm talking about. Okay, so let's click on this uh, role and see what more options it has for us. Okay, so in here we can see this option which says add assignments. So if I am to assign this role to some user, I can simply click on it. And then in here I can see select members. So if I click on it, and then in here I can search for my user which is let's say John Doe. So I will click on it and then select and then simply click next. But I will not do that right now. I will do that after a while, okay. I will go back to the previous screen and then see the description for this roles okay so in the description tab we have the name of the role we have the description about what it role actually does and the important thing here is the role permissions now these are basically the set of permissions that we talked earlier in this video these permissions will actually determine what what at uh, what level of access this role would have for the resources okay so in this case i have the directory read permissions okay so you can go ahead and read all of this if you're really interested but in most of the cases you won't even need that because microsoft azure has uh, pre-configured their roles so well so well that in most of 95 percent of the cases you won't even need to create new roles for for, for yourself but if you still want to create uh, 
the option is right there okay so I'm gonna show you that option as well I'm gonna go back go back and then create a new custom role add a new custom role I'm gonna click on this option and then it asks for the name of the role the description and then if you want to clone a custom role that have you that you have previously created or you want to start from the scratch it's entirely your uh, your choice okay and then this is the most important tab the permissions so if you're creating a role you you have to know what permi what permissions you should give to your role okay in order to have it behave as intended so you can go ahead and search about these okay we have talked much about the roles and at this point I hope that you have a very good understanding about what roles are in Azure. Now from administration's perspective it is not a very good approach to assign roles to individual members or users. Technically we can do that and we saw earlier that we can assign roles to the users directly but imagine giving different roles to a hundred or hundreds of organization members and then having to keep track of all the access and permissions granted to every one of them. Well, this is where the concept of groups comes in. And the good thing is that this concept of roles and groups in Azure is mostly similar with the concept of groups on our on-premises Active Directory service. So let's see what the groups are in Azure. In simple words, Group is a collection of member or users to which we assign access permissions or roles which are then inherited by the individual users automatically, those users who are the members of that group, okay? So let's go ahead and have a look at how the groups are actually uh, created, how they look like in Azure, and what can we do with them. Let's navigate to Azure Active Directory once more. And then from here we go to the option which says Groups. Now in here we can see all the groups that were previously configured. Now in here we can see group types. Now for all company groups it says Microsoft 365 and for the second group it says security. Now what are the group types? We have basically two group types in Azure. One is Microsoft 365 and the other one is security groups. Now security groups are related to the access management for the Azure resources which include storage accounts, virtual machines, databases, etc. Whereas Microsoft 365 groups are related to the access management for 360, Office 365 related applications. It could be Teams, it could be SharePoint, so you get the point, right? And by this option, we can create our own groups as well. So let's see what this option has for us. Okay, so I'm presented with this blade. Now the first option is group type we have already talked about that this one is the group name and then the group description and then this very important option over here which says Azure AD roles can be assigned to the group. Now Microsoft Azure has added this feature for us which will allow us to assign roles to the groups which is a very very useful features and which is the which is actually where the groups shine okay and then there's this option which is a membership as a membership type which is assigned dynamic user dynamic device so based if we select this dynamic options maybe it will um, maybe the user will be assigned to this group based upon some policies or roles etc okay you can go ahead and search for that now let's talk about owners who are the owners so if i add owners to these groups let's say i add this user john doe now john doe will be able to manage this user now the important thing to understand is that john doe does not have to be a part of this group a part of this group in order to be the owner of this group okay it can be external user as well and then finally we have the members so in here it says no members have been selected so if I click on it and then I can search for any user that I want to add so let's say I will I search for John Doe so here it goes we can simply click it and then select okay now before I proceed I have uh, set up a very simple a very simple lab which will cover all of these topics which have which we have studied so far in this lesson okay so as you can see on the screen I have set up a simple activity which is to number one create a group number two add users to that group number three assign applications to that group and verify number four assign some as your role to that group and verify and number five log in from the assigned user to check now if we do this activity we will most probably have the overall concept of 
how roles work, how they are integrated within the roles, uh, sorry, within the groves, and what are permissions, etc. We'll cover all this in this lab, okay? So once again, I'm at my Azure home screen. Now, the first part of the activity is to create a group. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's navigate to Azure Active Directory and then select this option Groups. And then add a new group. Now, the same options as before. As for the group type, I'm going to leave it to security. Now, the group name, let's call it custom. And as for the description, let's type in dummy. Now, this option which says as your ready roles can be assigned to the group. Yes, of course, we're going to need that because it is a part of our activity. Okay, this third uh, part of the activity is actually this. So, I'm going to select this option to be yes. Okay. Now, what is the second part of the activity, which is add users to that group, which is basically this option. As for owners, I'm not going to add any owners for now. I'm going to jump in to jump on to the members. So no members have been selected as for now. So I'm going to click on it and then search for my user, which was John Doe. And if you remember, we, we created this user in our previous video. So I'm going to use the same user. I'm going to select it. Now the user has been added. What I can do next is jump on to my third activity, which is assign some Azure role to that group and verify. So in the role section, no roles has been selected so far. So I'm going to click on it. And then I can select the same role which we discussed uh, a while ago, which was directory readers. Okay, so I'm going to click on it. I'm going to select it or check it and then click select button. Okay, so the group is about to be created. One member has been added and role has been assigned to this group. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click create. So it's telling me creating a group to which Azure AD roles can be assigned is setting that cannot be changed later, which means that uh, later on I won't be able to I won't be able to add any roles to this group. So am I sure? Uh, am I sure with these settings? So yes, for now I'm I'm pretty sure. Yes, I'm going to click yes. And then this pop-up shows me the status of the operation okay so the group has been created now so let's verify the settings let's see what are the users that have been assigned to this group and let's see if the role that we assigned to this group has actually been assigned or not so I'm gonna click on it <coughs> and then in here I can see that under direct member section one user has been added to this group already okay now, in order to check the roles that have been assigned to this group, I can use this option which says assign roles. I'm going to click on it. And in here, I can see directory readers. Now, if you remember, this was the role that we actually assigned to this group. Okay. So, until now, we have created a group. We, had, we have added a user to that group. And, where, and we have assign a you assign an azure role to that group also okay and all of these settings have been verified now let's move on to our fourth part of the activity which is assign applications to that group and verify okay so if i click on applications i can see that no applications have been assigned to this group as of now okay so let's go ahead and assign some application to this group let's navigate back to the home screen I'm going to select this option which says enterprise applications let's click on it and then let's say I want to assign this application Microsoft Teams to the newly created group so I'm going to click on it and then in here I can go to this option which says users and groups okay and then this gives me the option to either uh, assign this application to an individual user or assign this application to a whole group which is exactly what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to click on it. And then under this section, which says users and groups, none has been selected. So I'm going to click on this blue text and then search for the, for, for the group, not the user, because at this time we are not assigning this application to an individual user. Instead, we're assigning this applications to that group that we created. And I can see this group right here, which is this custom group. Okay. So I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to click on assign. Okay, so this group has been assigned this applications. Now let's go back to my home screen as your active directory and let's verify it from the group section. Let's go to the newly created group, which was custom group. And then I can go to this tab, which says applications. 
to see if the t if the application has been really assigned to this group or not and we can see clearly that microsoft teams has been assigned to this group okay let's verify one more thing let's go back to the home screen active directory and let's go to the users navigate to this user john doe which is a part of that group which we newly created let's click on it and then click on this option which says applications as you can see this user just because this user was actually a part of that group which was assigned this application so this application has automatically been assigned to this user as well now in future if we add more users to that group this application will automatically be assigned okay so from administration perspective this is a very cool feature to have okay now that we know what are roles what are groups how we can assign a role to the individual users as well as to the whole groups i want you to go ahead and create a similar scenario and practice with it so that you understand it better with this the discussion on roles groups and role based access control is over and i'll see you in the next session thank you for watching